your network setup within your Avantra landscape can be as simple as a direct two-way connection between your master and your agent. You also have the option of much more complex setups, including using an agent as a gateway or as a proxy for agent communication back to the master server. You also have complex options such as fallback routes, should your primary communication route become unavailable. In this session, we're going to take you through an ex a pretty common example with your master server in a management network and your agents in a remote network. In this case, we will set up an agent which is set up as a gateway and it will facilitate the communication to the agents within the remote network. So let's go ahead and get started. Hey everybody, welcome back to Mastering Avantra. And today's topic is all about agents in remote networks communicating back to your master server. So why don't we go ahead and get started. And, and the three things we're gonna be setting up today are first of all, we're gonna set up a gateway. So add a brand new server to our Avantra instance, which is gonna be a facilitating communication to other agents. Uh, then we're going to add some routes. So, and these are configurations so that when we add new servers, we know how to communicate with them. And then finally, let's go ahead and add a server in that remote network so that we're following our example here. So on the right, we have our agents communicating back through the gateway into the master server on the left. So here I have my Avantra system, as I always do. And if I pop into systems, you'll see it's currently set up with one server, which is my master server. So what the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a gateway agent. So if I pop back into our diagram, this is the agent right in the middle of the screen here, marked agent that's gateway enabled. Now, by gateway enabled, all I mean is this little checkbox here. So if you have a server already configured on your, on your system and it's gonna be your proxy or your gateway, you just make sure you tick this box and it will become available as, uh, for use by other agents through which they can communicate. But I'm not gonna use my master server in this particular instance, I'm gonna add a dedicated gateway and this is pretty common. So if you have a remote network um, through which there will only be one entry point, you'd probably put a gateway at that entry point to facilitate the communication. So let's go ahead and add my gateway. It's just a standard server I've already set up and it's waiting for its configuration. So I'm gonna go uh, new physical server and gdev or dma gw1 standing for gateway number one. I'm gonna put it in the customer mastering of Antra and it's gonna be a production system and I don't need the IP address because my DNS lookup in this particular instance works perfectly, so I hit okay. <clears throat> now what's gonna happen here is the master server is going to do its usual normal communication with this new server we just added um, and set up the agent for the first time to so do the first set of checks uh, and make sure everything is, is the way it should be. Um, if I hit refresh, it's still in the process of doing this, but it's already successfully communicated. And I know this because it knows what version of the agent is on that machine. And if I hit refresh, bang, it goes green. So let's open it up. It's a Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 box. Um, everything here looks absolutely fine. It's hosted in Google. It has four gigs of memory, um, et cetera, et cetera. Now I'm gonna tick this box I showed you earlier to say use as gateway. Now that just means that Avantra now knows this is a system through which we can use or we can communicate to other, other machines. I'm actually gonna turn the master off as a gateway because I don't need that enabled. And you see the icon changes slightly here from just having uh, an arrow through it, which is what that one has, to no arrow. Okay, so if I pop back over to our diagram, you'll see here that in the center of the screen, we have added our gateway enabled agent to our landscape. It's ready to use. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pr prepare for adding my agents on the right-hand side here, the remote agents, which will not have a direct connection to this Avantra master server. Um, now, I'm gonna do this properly. So I'm gonna set up this remote network under a completely different customer within my Avantra master server. Once I have that set up, then I can set up the route through which all communication for that customer must follow. And this is, this is really quite elegant because you don't wanna configure a brand new route every single time you add one system. You know, that, that could get quite tedious. Um, so we have the ability to say all uh, agents within a specific customer or within a specific selector um, must follow this route. And that's a really powerful concept. 
So let's have a look. So back into our system, I'm going to go to administration and into customers. And you see here, I have a single customer at the moment under which all my existing servers are already configured. But I'm gonna add a new customer. And this customer is gonna be called uh, Fruit in, uh, Deliveries Incorporated, just for example. We hit create, and I'm gonna say sample customer during demo of Roots. And I'm going to hit apply. Now I have loads of other information I could fill in here about this customer. Um, everything from time zone right through to what applications they'll be using. I can create custom applications. I'm not going to do that here. I don't need to. For the purposes of this demo, we have two customers. We have our mastering Avantra, which has our master server and the gateways. And then we have our customer network. In this case, our customer is called Fruit Deliveries. Okay, so that's the customer setup. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna configure the route through which we communicate with servers within this customer. So I'm going to go again back to administration and I'm going to go to the routes section. Now I mentioned earlier, you could actually go into the server individually and go to the connectivity tab over here on the right and start adjusting things, but I really don't recommend that because that's when you know it becomes less scalable um, and all that kind of fun stuff. So really speaking, we want to configure our roots in the roots area over here. So we hit plus and we're going to create a new route. And this route is for fruit deliveries limited. Um, so that I'm going to hit apply. Oh, and now I got to select, hit, hit a system selector. Okay. So actually I haven't defined my system selector yet. So let's go ahead and do that before we go any further. So I'm going to go to, con, uh, to systems and system selectors, and I'm gonna create a new selector for all fruit deliveries, oops, ink servers, like this, and they'll be uh, of the type server or all if I care to go down that route, and I'm gonna say the customer is fruit deliveries ink. So new, and I'm gonna do a test selector, I find nothing, but I I'm not going to change um, the criteria here through which we search. I'm just saying that all servers need to, uh, within this customer need to be within the selector. Now a word of warning here, because I've seen customers come in and go, ah, excellent, yes, okay, I'm gonna have a different route for my Red Hat systems versus my Windows systems or my development systems or my production systems. That's all well and good, but remember at the point where you add the system to Avantra for the first time, Avantra knows nothing about that system other than what you've enabled in the UI. What customer does it belong to? What kind of system is it? So if you start putting in criteria here that are based on information on the system, like what OS it's running or what version it's running, and try to derive your roots from that, that will work only after the server has been added to Avantra for the first time. So bear that in mind. You don't want to select criteria here that will never be true when you're adding a server for the first time. Just, just a little word of warning. Okay, so this system selector selects all systems because no search criteria are defined. Click OK to continue. Yeah, that's fine. So now we have all Fruit Deliveries Inc. servers. So if we go back to routes, go back to configuring our route, we can say select a system selector. And actually, let's do a refresh here so that we get the latest information. We go all Fruit Deliveries Inc. servers. Perfect. Now we have our root set up, or we have our root def uh, object defined. Now we need to design the actual root itself. Now this might look a little daunting. It's honestly not, it's quite easy. So normally this is a standard setup. Your master talks to your agent and vice versa. Typically the master talks to the agent on the standard port of 9051, and the agent talks back to the master on the standard port 9050 all configurable. So if I start mentioning ports later on in this and if they don't match what you have, it may be that you change your ports and that's fine. So here, all I do is I select this one here, this route, and it says, okay, this is the master to the agent, direction towards the agent, type is the agent communication. And I'm gonna hit this button here, insert gateway. Now, Avantra at this point will suggest to you the gateways that are available, which is really nice. And that's why that checkbox earlier was so important. So I have my gateway one and I say insert and boom. Now it, we know that if the master is initiating communication to the agent, it must go through this gateway. But what about the reverse? And by the way, we're seeing some of the power here because depending on how you set this up, you may have different 
gateways for different directions or different routes. Um, so this is a really um, amazingly flexible tool for getting your network set up correct. Um, in this case, I'm gonna make it quite simple. If we go back to our um, scenario over here, so the middle gateway is going both directions. So everything must go through the agent enabled, or the gateway enabled agent. So on this leg, the leg from the agent back to the master, we insert a gateway and we select the same one. And hit insert, and just like that, we now have the setup done so that the master is always communicating through GW1 to access the agent, and the agent knows to go through DW1 to get back to the master. That's it. I mean, we could do a lot more here. So for example, for this route over here, or for this, uh, this gateway, we could say add a backup gateway. If we had any others available, they would show up here. And again, that's quite powerful if you want a, a really resilient network setup, where if the gateway itself goes down for whatever reason, there's another route back to your master server or to the agent for the master server, depending on your setup. Um, it's all about how resilient you want to make your network setup. In this case, I'm just going with one gateway and I'm gonna say apply and I'm gonna set it active. So the route is active now. So we now know that for, and I'll hit refresh here, so it's tick, for all Fruit Deliveries Inc servers, I called it limited here, I'm just gonna, for the sake of my OCD, for all Fruit Deliveries Inc servers that we, and, and we have a, our selector here, this will be the network design for the servers within that setup. Okay, so let's go back to our diagram and just recap where we are. So we have our master server, which was already set up and, and running quite nicely. We added a gateway enabled agent. And if I you know, pop over to the, the servers over here, that's this one here, GW1. Um, so that is ready to go. It is enabled as a gateway. And now we're at the point where we have defined that any agent defined in our remote network called Fruit Deliveries Inc. Um, must travel through the gateway enabled agent in order to get to the, uh, the remote agents. So our next step and hopefully final step will be to add one of these remote agents. So I'm gonna say new physical server, uh, gdev or dma vm1. Imaginatively, imaginatively, it's Virtual Machine 1. Now the customer in this case is gonna be Fruit Deliveries Inc. And that's very important because that is how we now derive the correct route for this system um, by putting it within that customer. So I'm gonna put in the uh, FQDN again because I don't need the IP. And now everything is set up and we're good to go. So this system has now been added. And if I go into connectivity, the really nice thing is that without me doing anything else, the connectivity has already detected, ah, this is a machine that is in Fruit Deliveries Inc. network, and so this is the network routing that must be applied. This was done automatically and out of the box. And if I hit refresh, we'll see that the system's already gone green. Everything is communicating as it should. We have all the information, or we will in a few minutes, there we go. So we've all the information about this machine. It's Red Hat Enterprise Linux, it's in Google, um, et cetera, et cetera, and it's ready to go. And that's it. So what we've done there is we have successfully set up a master server, an agent at the border of a remote network, and we've set up some agents in that remote network communicating through the agent gateway. And it's as simple as that. Now you could go a, a lot farther than this and you could daisy chain many, many gateways. You could have you know, a few multiple hops to get from one data center to another, but then within another VLAN within that data center, you can do that. You can have multiple daisy chained agents as well as backup routes and so much more. So that's it. That is a first look at how to set up your network configuration within Avantra, how to set up a route, and then how to auto apply that route to uh, specific network segments based on criteria. So there we go. If you have any questions, please let us know, but thanks very much for watching and see you next time.